Hi and welcome to a Trains tutorial on Clutter. Clutter is a new feature coming up in uh, the next version of Trains and uh, today we're going to go through and explain it to you. You can find this page uh, if you google it by Trains Clutter shows two pages you'll be interested in. One is the clutter effects layer. We're going to show that in the demo as well. It tells you how to uh, go about setting up your effects layer for clutter. There's also an effects layer for turf effects um, but we won't touch on that today. And then there's the m.clutter material which is important. That's the one we're going to be using uh, to set up our clutter objects or assets or meshes. So you'll also want to know, um, jump into material types on the wiki uh, and look through um, the new PBR material types and understand those uh, I'm not going to cover those today, I'm not going to cover the, ch the textures that are required but you need to know that otherwise your clutter um, mightn't work because you do you do need to use a new PBR pipeline that the next trains version comes with. Right, let's get started. There's two ways you can use clutter, oh there's probably more, but these, there's two ways I'm going to cover in this tutorial and I don't think I'll fix, fit the next one into this tutorial because they're going to be quite long um, but the next one I'll do is crossfading. This one, what we're going to do is just um, have each of our LODs pop like the usual popping you see in uh, previous trains versions. So LOD 0 will um, pop straight into LOD 1, which will pop straight into LOD 2, and so on and so forth. But the final LOD will have this nice uh, fade out transition. Okay, that's what we're going to cover today. It's the, it's the more simple version of clutter. Um, I can see people using a lot more than the crossfade. Um, crossfading is generally used if you don't have very good LOD. Like you can clearly see um, the LOD popping from LOD 0 to LOD 1. Uh, it's very obvious, so you might want to use some crossfading. Also, it's worth noting that clutter is only used for uh, really small objects, like a meter or so, um, right up close. You don't want to use it on massive objects, it just won't work because we're going to be fading these out pretty quickly like uh, maybe 200 meters 300 meters up to a thousand meters possibly but you don't really probably want to go that far but you can I guess okay so to start off with let's jump into Max uh, any 3d modeling software you've got I've modeled a little tiny um, well this one's a 5 by 5 point 0.5 point 0.5 point 0.5 so it's half a meter size cube I've got two here um, I'm going to show you that LOD 0 will, will show as it does and then after 100 meters it'll pop out and then LOD 1 will pop in uh, and then LOD 1's going to fade out from 100 meters to 200 meters, okay? That's what we're going to see in this example. Uh, what I've done here is I've got one material I'm using across both meshes. Uh, I've called it box dot uh, magical material name M dot clutter. You need that, otherwise it's not going to know. Trains isn't going to know that it's a clutter material. You need it. Uh, it's set up the way the PB uh, textures need to be set up. I'm not going to explain how that's done. You need to look that up if you don't know. Uh, and then uh, what you can do also, uh, you can use, you don't have to use the same material on, on all your LODs. You can use different materials if you have to. Uh, but I strongly suggest you don't because that adds more draw calls to your asset. Um, you might want to just fit everything into one texture if you can. Uh, but keep the resolution high too if you can because it's gonna, these things are going to be seen up close to the camera. So that's it. I've got one material, box.m.clutter. Right, let's move on to uh, what happens next. I've applied that material. I've now exported both of these individually. So I've gone export, selected, um, lot zero, and then I've gone export. Oh, I've selected the other one, export, selected, LOD 1. I've exported those. I'm just, I'm not doing the whole thing as I want to speed up this tutorial as much as I can. Uh, I've got an asset here. LOD 0, LOD 1. They've already been exported. I've got a thumbnail. I've got my textures and texture files. Again, look those up if you don't know what they're meant to be. Uh, the things I'm going to show you today is the config and the metadata files, which are these two here. Uh, in the config itself, it's a simple scenery object. You've probably seen a lot of this stuff before. T 
to use clutter it has to be 4.6 or above there's this new LOD tag here again if you need to know things go to Google type in trains in the tag and then under there you'll find uh, the mesh LOD information you can also click on the tag itself and it goes and tells you all about it here too uh, what it actually is um, so I can explain it to you is from 0 to 100 LOD, one, LOD 0 or LOD 1 whatever you want to call it LOD 0 will show from 100 to 200 LOD 1 will show and that's what this mesh table says here I've got LOD 0 the containers can be called anything I just call them the same names as the FBX uh, so LOD 0 will be LOD level 0 which is 0 to 100 uh, LOD 1 oh sorry LOD 1 the mesh will be LOD level 1 from 100 to 200 and that's our clutter asset the rest is that uh, and then once we've set up our clutter asset um, keeping in mind that's very important we need to remember that um, our LOD distances because we'll be using them in our metadata files so we've got 100 for and 200 okay next we set up our metadata files and under here not the crossfading part we'll cover that in another tutorial um, there's a good example uh, video there if people want to have a look to see exactly what clutter is I forgot to mention that at the start um, otherwise just watch this video obviously the it should just say metadata configuration uh, or actually this is the cross-fading metadata configuration but um, what we'll show you now is just the fading out the last LOD okay and all we need to use is this fade out and distance tag which I'm about to show you but each of your FBX files for metadata uh, need if you want an, a metadata file associated with an FBX file all you do is use the same name as your FBX file dot txt because it's just a simple text file and under this you can specify a whole bunch of things um, if we go back to here and type in metadata files or again Google trains metadata there you go shows you the file format um, metadata files tags there as well so this is very handy with your FBX files it does a lot of different things um, we're just using it for one example today but definitely read up about it because you'll want to use metadata files with your FBX files um, they're, they're really good okay what we're doing uh, we've created a metadata file for our LOD0 uh, so LOD0.txt again there it is there uh, we create the materials container uh, and then we add our material name box.m.clutter that was the one that we applied to both LOD0 and LOD1 and we're just using the fade out and distance tag because we want it to fade out be fully faded by 200 meters that's what that means okay and because just a side note if you are using the same material on both or all your meshes regardless of how many LODs you have you need to specify a metadata file for all your LODs if they're sharing a material if LOD0 used a different material you don't need to do this but because I'm using the same material on both my LODs LOD0 and LOD1 have metadata files that are exactly the same fade out distance otherwise trains will complain about that because it'll think LOD0 wants to fade out at 0 and LOD1 wants to fade out at 200 and you can't have the same material doing two different things okay so that's it that's fully set up now we've got our configuration done and our metadata file files created uh, and let's see what happens in trains I've installed it already so we load it up and you can see a little box uh, zoom level is at 1 so we're at 1 meter away from it and as we start to zoom out you'll see a pop at uh, around 100 meters uh, somewhere there, so there's a little pop if you can see that, it's really tiny uh, and then after that it'll start to fade out, you can see it kind of fading out now let's get this in game because it's really hard to see I'm sure but that's just using preview asset, you can right click open preview asset and that shows you a little window save you loading everything up but we're going to create a route and first of all we'll touch on where the effects layers are, so under topology advanced you've got this new little button here uh, which is the effects layers um, and then all your effects layers will show under here we haven't got any at the moment create a clutter 
test one is in my name of the effect. I don't want it to be a turf effect, I want it to be a clutter effect. And there's a whole bunch of information in here that we need to go through. Clutter density will take up a little bit of time, so we'll come back to that. Uh, let me just set it to maybe that and that. It's about basically precision and control, the density. But I'll come back to that because um, it's a little bit complicated unless I explain it. Spacing. Uh, how how much space apart each of the um, clutter assets will be. I'm going to put it in a meter for now, but we could change that. Whether you want to randomize it, um, whether they get twist and turned all around and all different so the scene doesn't look the same. I'm going to leave that as false so we can clearly see what's happening. And our draw distance, very important. The last, uh, to, to get the fade out correct, it needs to be the same as your last LOD. Um, that it needs to be the same as your last uh, LOD transition in your config. So we've got 200 as our last LOD transition, that's when we want it to be fully faded and then we've specified that as our fade out end distance, 200 in our metadata files. You need to put that in the draw distance as well, 200. If you put less, you're going to see it pop. If you put more, mm, there's no real point I guess. Uh, it can d use up to 1000 meters of a draw distance for a clutter layer. Then you click here to add the asset. Uh, it was called clutter. Clutter. Where are you? There we go. Fade out last load. This you can add multiple um, assets, as many as you want. These are the percentage sliders of how um, random things will show. So if this is right up here and this is way down here, then it's going to use this a lot more throughout your clutter layer than it is going to use whatever you set this asset to. Uh, you, s you push it all the way back and you can get a little cancel button. So as we've got one asset, it doesn't really matter. It's going to just always use that asset. Uh, let's apply this and I'll come back to the clutter density layer. So we're done there. To use it, um, you can see now I've got a, a clutter effect there or a layer. I click that and you can paint it with the height up and you can remove it with the height down. So height up get our radius, uh, sensitivity, I'll go through that in a second uh, and as we start to paint you can see it kind of come up on the screen. Now there's another important thing to see is that you can see after about a hundred meters there's no fade happening here. You can see the LOD transition happening because we've made LOD 2. Uh, remember LOD 2 is a tiny bit bigger. So you can see uh, LOD 1, if that's what you want to call it, zero one. 1. Um, you, can, you can see it Ste the LOD's definitely working, but the fade isn't happening. And that's because the clutter layers only allow you to render so many polygons. Because um, uh, if we allowed you to do um, and as many as you want, you'll crush the machine. So we restrict that, um, which means my spacing has to go up. And you'll need to play around with it, but I, I think two should be okay. And so now I've got two meter spacing, and it's, it's now drawing it a lot further, and it's getting to that 200 meter mark. And you can see that. My LOD 1's going from LOD, LOD 0 to LOD 1, you can see the pop happening, and then uh, that fade is also coming into play there. So, you know, you're going to get a nice, um, as you move through the world, uh, you're going to get that kind of fade in effect um, that you'll, you'll hopefully, if you're right up close to your um, assets or your clutter, you're not going to be able to tell as you're moving through the world, because they're, you know, half a meter in size, there might be little plants or some kind of nice clutter foliage, who knows. Uh, now, that is the simplest version of clutter. That's not using crossfading. If we use crossfading, um, remember you use crossfading when your LODs are terrible and you can't get them to match up. Obviously this is the worst LOD you'd ever want to do because not, they don't even match up. The crossfading probably wouldn't even, even help there. Um, but this is uh, pop popping between the two LODs and the last one's fading out, okay? This, that's the example today. The next example I'll show you will be cross-fading, which is a little bit um, more difficult. You need to use unique materials and have a few more things in your metadata files. Uh, right, let's go through clutter density. This is all about precision and control. Uh, you've got a set amount of data you can um, call upon, and then you've got the size in which you control uh, your grids. So right now I'm using a grid of 2.6, uh, 2.5 meters. Okay, so that 2.5 meter grid allows me to really get down and kind of get some precision with my 
um, as, as I paint around, okay? As you increase that, uh, that meterage, you really lose um, precision. See, everything's changed now because it's doing it over an 80 meter um, grid. So then it's probably somewhere around there. So every time I click, um, it's it's painting down 80 meters of it. So that that uses a lot less data. So that this is all about data size storage. Um, your route's gonna thank you for it in in size if you increase uh, the size of this. The smaller it gets, the more data it'll use. Same with this, obviously, because this is actually the data itself. Um, the more, the, the higher this gets, the more data it'll use as well. So, use what you need. Don't go max on everything, and and don't try and get down to here on everything, because you're not going to be able to achieve it. You can only use so much data per clutter layer. Um, and as you can see, if I went 32 on a 1.25 meter. Uh, radius it just doesn't let me it says the bindings exceed the maximum size so you've got to kind of look for what works with that may get in one on that I think yeah so that that will give you really small amounts of precision but uh, let me let me explain what this is zero is nothing so it literally turns it off it won't render anything one will either be completely off or completely on you get no sensitivity you get no control over how much you want to paint down, basically. Uh, for example, if we go with that, I'll get down to about a meter, uh, and it's literally on or off. So I get a nice, you know, I get nice control, but uh, as soon as I go to get rid of it, it's it's gone. Like there's there's no um, there's no just couple of taps to get rid of a couple. You literally get rid of the whole grid because it's a one it's a one int on or off. Uh, if we go to 36, uh, float 16, and we maybe go 10 meters, um, then you'll start to see that, you know, if I go somewhere over here, and I make my uh, 10 meter a little bit, a little bit bigger. That's that looks like a 10 meter. No, come on, work with me here. Oh, it's down. Sorry, that's why it's not working. We want to hide up. Okay, so. As I click more and more in the same spot, you can see that I get more and more boxes, which which is because I've got more data to work with. It's not off and on. There's 16 bits of precision. So uh, now I can kind of set my sensitivity a little bit, and as I start to remove um, some, you can see some of those boxes going away with each click, uh, whereas int 1 is either off or on. It's either fully covered or it's not. So that's that's your clutter density. You need to tweak them for what you actually need it for, not the, um, you know, the max values of these things and the minimum values of these, because you're just not going to be able to achieve it. Uh, and that's everything else covered in in uh, the effects layer, I think, as well. If you have any questions on um, on the, this this version of Clutter, where it's uh, you've got your LODs popping in until you get to your final LOD, where it fades out, uh, please feel free to. Um, mention it on the, the YouTube channel or in the trains forum and we'll get back to you. The next tutorial I want to show you is getting this crossfading working so that when you get up nice and close to a really high detailed object you can drop the LOD dramatically um, and in max you'll see it it is quite significant how many polys are missing but as the crossfade starts to work you don't even notice that popping of the LODs because it's not it's not popping, it's doing a nice crossfade between LOD 0 and LOD 1 and then it'll crossfade between LOD 1 and LOD 2 and then finally it'll fade out. Uh, and we'll do a cube example as well just for simplicity but we'll also try and fit in something that's really detailed and show you as well. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the first tutorial on Clutter. Uh, any information or extra information you need let us know and uh, thanks for watching.